Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Ministry of Education to embark on an academic recovery program to offset the impact of COVID-19. The chairman of the COVID-19 Management Center addresses issues surrounding the national response to the pandemic. And government pursues a landfill free St. Lucia by 2030. The Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training is reporting a successful return to the classroom for the nation's student population. The school term resumed in the physical setting for all students on Monday 8th, November 2021 as the island draws nearer to resolution of the fourth wave of COVID-19. The Ministry of Education has also announced that it will be embarking on academic recovery and accelerated learning programs to compensate for lost instruction time. Details in this report by Homer DeMarc. Students across the island returned to the physical classroom setting on Monday. Instruction had to be conducted via virtual platforms for students with smart devices and internet connectivity following the onset of the fourth wave of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. Officials from the Ministry of Education took the opportunity on Monday visiting various schools with a view of ensuring that students had a seamless transition back to the classroom. Honorable Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, explained that several measures have been put in place to ensure the health and safety of all students. Well, we would know that last year we had a term where all the students were back and most schools have refined their protocols to ensure the safety of our students. So you have students wearing their mask at school, um, we have the social distancing at, at, at the schools, um, we also have um, well, social distances, masks, we have um, different um, at, the, at the gate you would be welcomed by someone who would take your temperature, ensure that your hands are sanitized, and there are different pots around the school compound where students can wash their hands and sanitize to ensure that their hands are clean at all times. Acting Education Officer Cyrus Sipal indicated that the Ministry of Education is also embarking on an academic recovery program. The program aims to ensure that no child is left behind as a result of disruptions in instruction. What is important now is the, um, <clears throat> the academic performance and along with that now the social upbringing and the uh, emotional psychological aspect of it with reference to school. So, so returning face to face it has more to it than just simply the, the, um, the knowledge aspect of it. And then now with this now we are also considering you have the learning loss that may have taken place because of the distributed learning because as you know yes the teachers were doing um, their best to try to get everybody with the online platform but there were some children we could not reach so because of that there would have been some learning loss so therefore we are putting a program in place for the academic recovery to take place and along with that now we are going to put another program in place called the accelerated learning so we're going to have the academic recovery and the accelerated learning working together so the children can be where they are supposed to be. Acting Chief Education Officer highlighting the importance of students' return to the classroom explained that students' holistic well-being was considered during the decision-making process. In the school setting, the psychological component with it most children, when they are at home, we don't know what they are going through. We don't know the conditions they are at home, how much learning is really taking place. They want to learn, but in the environment with which they operate, you also have to consider the psychosocial aspect of it. You also have to consider the nutritional aspect of it, because remember, we have a lot of the children, especially the primary school, who depend on the feeding program of the Ministry of Education to get a good meal. So all of these components, and as I said now, we had a number of children who were um, getting the packages from the schools. However, they, we could not give them any feedback because the, we had no interaction between the teacher and the student. So although they would receive a package, but they were not getting the feedback. So that one month, and that's why the minister had said we are not going to have end of term exams, but we are going to have interaction with the children from day one of this month until the last day. So then now, um, the misconceptions that they may have got during the packages that they got or probably where there was internet um, internet connectivity issues and then they may have lost on certain things then that one month would actually bridge that gap 
and prepare them now for next term. We are hoping that things will be okay, that we will continue the face-to-face. -face. Principals the island over have welcomed students' return to the classroom. Principal of St. Mary's College, Don Howell, assured that the school, in collaboration with all stakeholders, have put in place the necessary measures to ensure the safety of all students. Schools across the island, including special education schools and tertiary institutions, resumed in-class instruction as of Monday, 8th November 2021, using the face-to-face -face modality via whole school or alternate day approach. From the Government Information Service, Humedi Mark reporting. Meanwhile, the management of the COVID-19 pandemic requires a multifaceted approach and multi-sectoral involvement. The government of St. Lucia, recognizing this necessity, ensured that the National COVID-19 Management Center was comprised of professionals and representatives from a societal cross-section. The entity is responsible for advising the government on the best strategy for the management of the pandemic. During an appearance on Issues and Answers aired on the national television network NTN, Chairman Cletus Springer explained that his background in epidemiological analysis plays a major role in fulfilling the requirements of the position. My role is to um, examine the intersection of epidemiology right, and, and the strategy that is needed to combat this. So my focus is on where the hotspots Right, of infections. Um, what is happening there relative to the movement of people from that point to other points? Um, is there a link between the infections in, in, in the transportation system? Right, from the hot points to other points. You know, these kinds of, of, of considerations are what I bring to the, to, the, to, to, to the table. So it's my planning background, strategic planning, my communications, and my knowledge of the public service and my, my understanding of the people of St. The center's chairman in providing insight into the decision-making processes of the center highlighted the significance of protocols to maintaining low COVID-19 positivity rates. If you're seeing a trend that says to you, if that trend continues, your capacity to cope will be overwhelmed. Right? You, your, your bed space in the hospitals, your intensive care capabilities, your availability of nurses, your availability of doctors, the ability of the government to, to, to buy oxygen, you know, and all of the treatments that are required for it. If you see that trend, you are under an obligation to do something. In a, trend, in a situation like that, doing nothing is not an option. Now, where all of the, the, the tensions arise is what is the something you, you must do and, and how effective that is. And people have their own views on how effective confinements, um, which is not a nice term, but um, how effective these, these are. Um, in our case, I think the data is very clear. At the peak of our, of our fourth wave, um, in the fourth wave, I think we, we had about 7,000, just over 7,000 cases. In the third wave, we had about 5,000. So it's very clear that the, the fourth wave has, has been far more severe than the third. But we're in a situation now where from that peak of about seven cases, 7,000 cases, we are now down to um, just about 350 active cases. Okay? Now, you, you, you might argue, what has brought this about? Is it the lockdowns? Is it the, 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 the confinement? Is it people's strong adherence to the, to, the, to, the, to the protocols. It could be any or all of these. But the fact is, we have now a situation that is more manageable than we had before. Another important factor in the management of the pandemic, Mr. Springer noted, is vaccination. He indicated that the country's low inoculation rates may be as a result of conflicting schedules and inadequate ease of access, an issue he said the COVID-19 Management Center is working to address. Meantime, the reconstituted COVID-19 Management Center will hold its inaugural meeting on Thursday, November 11, 2021. The meeting, which will take place at the Financial Administrative Center at Point Seraphine, will be addressed by Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, Honorable Moses Jabatiste.
Members of the COVID-19 Management Center will receive a report by the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, on lessons learned from St. Lucia's experience during the fourth wave of the pandemic. It is expected that representatives of the private sector on the COVID-19 Management Center will share their perspectives on a policy and strategic framework for handling the pandemic in a manner that will protect lives and livelihoods and promote a healthy economy. The meeting will be telecast live on the National Television Network from 10 a.m. The island's Minister for Sustainable Development has been assessing the existing systems and capacity for waste management. Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Honorable Sean Edward, accompanied by management of the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, recently conducted a tour of the Deglo Sanitary Landfill. Minister Honorable Edward indicated that the government of St. Lucia to achieve its goal of a landfill-free St. Lucia by 2030 must overcome the many challenges that currently exist. One such challenge is that the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority is currently without a general manager. The Sustainable Development Minister explained that the government of St. Lucia will be looking to appoint a general manager to lead such a critical agency. Ultimate objective is for us to have a landfill-free St. Lucia by the year 2030. Um, moving forward, there, there is also a very robust education plan and campaign that will be rolled out by the Solid Waste Management Authority. Um, generally speaking, I think St. Lucians have adapted well to solid waste um, disposal. And as I said, it is just a matter of ensuring that whatever we do, um, it is done in conformity with the best practices that exist in other parts of the world. As, as we speak, there's a situation where we are hauling waste from the south of the island all the way to the Deglo landfill. Um, I do not believe that this is, the, 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 this is best practice and this is something that we have to revisit as a new administration. It has cost the government of St. Lucia somewhere in the region of $2 million just to hold waste from Viewfort to Deglo. And in an environment where the government does not have too much fiscal space in which to maneuver and to to roll out programs with the, the, the rapidity that we would have liked as an incoming administration, this is something that we have to review and we believe that the $2 million that has been expended so far in, in trucking garbage from view for two day glow um, is money that could be used to, to in other areas of national development to provide relief for the citizens of this country. The government of St. Lucia, in addressing the issue of hauling waste from Viewfort to Castries, will be reviewing its agreement with Desert Star Holding, DSH, to allow for changes where possible and necessary in the best interest of citizens. The Sustainable Development Minister also explained that efforts will be channeled towards improving the work conditions at the landfill. When I came here uh, a couple of days ago, well, Probably I should say that from time to time I make an impromptu stop at the landfill just to get an appreciation for myself in terms of what the workers go through um, when the cameras are not around and, and, they're not, and, and there's no oversight being provided by management. And, and you get a much truer picture of what obtains. And I must tell you that um, when I came here two Sundays ago, I was not particularly thrilled with some of the conditions that I, I noticed the workers had to endure. Um, I have brought that to the attention of management day two. Um, were aware and it wasn't a deliberate um, it wasn't deliberate action on their part to have the workers um, enjoying the conditions that, that are obviously not favorable but moving forward um, we have all recognized that there's need for improvement and I can assure you that the next time you come here you will have the workers at the landfill and just workers at solid waste generally speaking much more favorably in terms of the conditions under which they have to work. Acting General Manager of the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, Loriana Sles Flores, explained that the landfill has been faced with the issue of waste not being covered, resulting in increased pests. He noted, however, that this would be addressed over the next two months. The Deglo Sanitary Landfill was commissioned in 2003 with a 20-year lifespan. Operation of the landfill comes at a monthly cost of $45,000, for equipment rental and wages, as the authority does not own any equipment. Based on the current situation, the authority is looking at an additional 9 to 12 years lifespan for the landfill, providing that a number of provisions are made, including the reduction of waste coming into the landfill. If we reduce the volume of waste coming into the landfill, 
uh, organic waste make up over 50 percent of the waste that's deposited there. Now the authority have a plan in terms of doing composting at the landfill and I will show you the site that we are prepared for that. In the coming months we'll be encouraging households and businesses to undertake composting. So our objective is to have very little compostable waste coming into the landfill. With regards to the other waste streams, example cans, plastic bottles, metal, we have a plan to do some segregation of that waste at the household level, but that's in the long term. So those measures would increase the life of the landfill considerably so that hopefully we could achieve, like the minister said, uh, zero landfill by the year 2030. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority also explained that some 20 incinerators were procured. However, it has been facing a number of challenges with their operationalization. Four of the incinerators were commissioned in February 2021. However, as of now, only one remains operational. As such, a significant effort will be made towards rectifying existing issues with the incinerators. From the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The livelihoods of fisherfolk have been brought into sharp focus by the Minister for Fisheries as he continues to lay plans for the subsector. We hear more in this report by the Ministry of Agriculture's Anisia Antoine. Approximately 25 fisherfolk from the Sufra area participated in a consultation headed by the Minister responsible for Fisheries, Honorable Alfred Prosper, and the Parliamentary Representative for Sufra, Honorable Emma Hippolyte, to discuss on what challenges and concerns they face and what intervention may be required from the Department of Fisheries. Minister Hippolyte has given the assurance that her commitment remains working with the Department of Fisheries to resolve the myriad of issues fisherfolk in the Sufra area face. I gave them a commitment that I will address some of the issues that they've raised, but I felt it was formal to give them the respect so that they can meet the minister responsible for fisheries, let them air their views and their concerns, and we sit here and hear the minister making some commitments and saying how, as a government, we will attempt to address the issues impacting fishers in Sufre, because in Sufre they've got some specific problems, as well as fishers in the entire country. Some of the main issues highlighted by the fishermen include the deterioration of the coral reefs, the high costs of deploying fish aggregating devices, commonly referred to as FADs, as well as the illegal use of gillnets within the reserves. Minister Prosper emphasized the importance of involving other sectors impacted by the fishing sector, such as tourism, in finding solutions to issues confronting the marine environment in Sufre. Our fishermen work very hard. They take high risk. They go out to the to sea and most times they don't make much. But yet there is very little coverage in terms of health insurance if they are sick or if they get injured at sea or if they lost at sea. Very little or no benefits are affordable for them. I am also concerned, um, with, um, based on, on what was mentioned today, the issue of sale of fish. I was not aware that the issue of moving the, the sales depot from the center of Sufre to this area would have impacted the fishers. And this is something I believe must be addressed at the soonest. And I am looking forward to my ministry working with the fishermen of Sufre, and not just Sufre, but the entire country to see how we can work with them and assist them and to make lives better for them. Minister Prosper also affirmed his commitment to assisting sector agencies such as the Sufra Marine Management Authority as the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development works to improve the livelihoods of all those affected by the sector. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. I got the COVID-19 vaccine to safely return to my dance class. I wanted the vaccine because I really missed being at school. I got vaccinated so that I can go visit my grandparents without having to worry about them getting ill. I asked my mom to be vaccinated after reading and realizing this was the best way to keep my family and friends protected. We all look forward to doing the things we love once more. 
the COVID-19 vaccine gives us this hope. The vaccine is protecting us and will protect you too. Vaccinate. For you, for yours, for us. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. Monsieur Ta Chanel, Monsieur Madame, Department qui nous responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale pays à NTN, Capozato Nouvelle en Creole, Capozato, Primus Hutchinson. Gain management établissement médical uh, pour ces institutions santé associées au millénium déclare que il y a noté information qui a fait mon à ce média social comme que l'hôpital ok il a expliqué y a une grande bataille et puis maladie corona mais là je vois ok il a expliqué qui y a continué pour opérer à des gens haut degré pour un service pour grand pour grande quantité en population cette ci selon management ok il Quand toute l'autre place business, l'hôpital est ok, j'en ai ou à compte et puis corona, mais il y a continué pour prendre des marches, pour protéger les travailleurs et aussi les gens qui ont trouvé le traitement à l'hôpital. Le management explique aussi qu'il y a pris la sécurité des travailleurs avec les malades très sérieux. Et ça, c'est pour, pour ça qu'il y a établi un protocole qui est très vide pour limiter les gens qui peuvent trouver à l'hôpital ok et puis maladie corona. Parmi les gars, et exposé travailler avec les malades pour maladie corona. Tout le monde qui a tué qui a tué l'hôpital ok you ni pour point un test spécial côté résultat qui avait la date 24 nadita. Tout protocole en place pour les travailler qui nous pour assister yo qui j'ai point test spécial ça là et si test là positif pour voir mon ça là pour l'hôpital Victoria immédiatement. Pendant yo qui a nettoyé et sanitise Chum côté moun salate ye, et aussi pour tester tout travail moun ki, tout travail moun ki ni malade, ki malade à place là, et yo ki te ka visite, ki te ni kotak, et moun na ki affecté. Le management l'hôpital, ok, yo ka conseille public là, pour suivre tout ce protocole, et comme la coutume, laver la main, et puis de l'eau avec savon, servir sanitaire, servir masque à soufijaye, gouverneur et bouchou, Obéir distance sociale, c'est ce Et si vous êtes malade, vous restez à Kai. Le management, ok, yo, ka plaide et puis public là, pour continuer à coopérer et puis yo, pour aider cette ci wabat mouvi pandémie ça là. Cette lycée ka continue pour trouver conseil pour entricher plus en produits local et servir manger qui a produit bonne santé et qui en haute qualité. Ce ministre des Affaires agricoles, Pêche, Le Fouet et Développement de la Commune, Honorable Alfred Prosper, qui fait appel à cela. Selon le ministre Prosper, Magoué, c'est très important pour santé nous. Ils savent la situation à présent difficile, comme le pays a une bataille et puis maladie corona, qui a une cause à pile de ces liens pour perdre du travail et par conséquence, malheureusement, ça a affecté les proches de façon qui est formidable. Alors, ce geste, Moun pa ni je choa pou manje sa ki kay pa plis a fave sa te yo. E psi nou pa ni la jan pou nou achete bon kandite manye ya, nou kay pa ni pièce choice pa se pou manye, se manye ya ki pa tuwa healthy pou nou. Ek nou kawe moun gale a yit kente ki, nou kawe moun gale an chay chikin ek lot ba ekon an, de le se pa fot yo. Se bikaz yo pa ni la jan, bikaz of covid la, pou achete se right manye ya, yo bouze. Mais la situation qui est très grave, c'est jeunesse qui n'est pas là pour embrasser le travail agricole, qui n'est pas besoin de pour cultiver et qui est plus facile si le gouvernement a fait cette salle avec pour faire ça en réalité. Le gouvernement a fait ça. Il a fait cette salle. 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 Mais là aussi, il a fait cette salle agricole en l'intérieur du gouvernement. Bon, on a fait cette salle. Il a fait cette salle. Il a fait cette salle. Mon quoi qui très important, parce que dix ans tant moi quand tu avais le fouet, là on est pour marcher femme en bout de chemin, on dit mi coui be ewa, on est pour penser combien différents terres privées avant on vit en terre réserve là. En chaque été c'était ça là actuellement à trouver quoi y'a bon année, parce qu'en chaque ces femmes à à qui te figue, en chaque monde aller l'autre pays, en chaque monde arriver en large côté, pas ça pour lui encore. 
Moi les gars, en vie ouais, c'est Tessa la haine qu'on a avalé pour ces jeunes monde en tué en récolte. Qu'est-ce qu'on me dit? L'année un chai grand monde qui a récolté au jouet. Quand l'autre peut-être 10, 15, 20 années, ces monde ça la pas qu'à y ça toi été encore. Mais man quoi ces monde ça la gai vie et vie et bail gouvernementé yo. Mais moi quand j'ai wish that un chai c'était un gouvernement qui avale lib that nous nous pas besoin pour conservation parce que côté y et c'était ça la bon pour récolte pour faire ces jeunes monde avec l'autre monde qui est ancien agricole pour un accès pour cette ça là les organisateurs profession modèle en cette ici j'ai décidé pour prendre une initiative nouveau pour essayer de battre force maladie corona à ce yo en temps passé en particulier du observation moi héritage coyol avec ces fabricateurs divers modèles had sous uh, souliers bracelets bagues à parmi l'autre Tu capte l'avantage de l'occasion pour exposer pour du haut pour le public là, mais Corona a changé tout ça à présent. Il y en a c'est plus go quick un business et organisateur modèle à cette ci à ce moment-là Joyce Merrick explique que c'était une initiative qui a commencé en mois de février pour faire le pays à plus au courant et puis travailler et pour encourager ces lycéens qui a payé aussi l'autre pays pour venir plus sensible pour produire. Mais comme la pandémie a chavié toutes ces places-là et que la saison est approchée, ils ont décidé de sortir et puis un modèle nouveau pour, pour uh, exposer divers produits à des modèles qui existent à cette ici. Si vous comprenez, Paul l'a assez bien. Mais nous, la euh, um, saison où elle est venue, c'est so novembre, nous um, nou gardons novembre um, pour faire tous les vendredis pour nous encourager cette lycée. Pour nous habiller en robe et faire en robe en cette lycée fait bayo. Il pas obligé à um, neuf et ça bagayo bayo ni mais pour mener um, awareness pour faire nous apprécier ça. Oui pour nous pour nous, right, pou nous apprécier ça qui ça nous puisque nous n'y a chaque talent nous qu'à parler about ces talents mais nous ni pour faire nous ni pour mutuer nous apprécier mm-hmm. et seule manière nous ça fait ça c'est si nous même um, mettez au parler about lui faire mon savent qui mon qui a fait ces qualités ces bagages là et ça nous qu'à um, nous qu'à hope qu'à aider um, ces mon ces um, couturiers là ces tailleurs mm-hmm. et ces mon qui a fait toute creative arts bagages comme ça c'est nous même celle Madrid Il n'y a pas que l'initiative ça là, qui aide pour encourager le peuple pour acheter. Puisque en chaque lieu ni bagay yo j'ai fait ni bagay yo ni fait fait, mais nous pas ni pièces um, fait step pour aller. Ce monde pas qu'à, um, you know, acheter quoi avant. Right. Mais nous nous ça fait ça nous concourir. À nous commencer trend à sur internet là. Right. On va prendre habiller, tirer portrait, poster. On va prendre avec tag c'est le chef fashion council. Ça fait hashtag là. Fashion Friday, um, SLU, Fashion Friday, Saint Lucia, just tag nous. Et pour nous ça, comme um, nous avons dit, um, Moutoué, nous apprécions ça au café. Puisque y a mon père en bagaille, um, en taille fait bon moins. Si moi posté, et que vous partez même ça, si mon salaire qui existe, et que vous ça fait con, contact, et que um, peut-être fait, um, fait ou fait travail bah aussi. Et que c'est bien, ça c'est côté nous à trois bouts de nouvelles là aujourd'hui là, mon cœur. Oui, monsieur, autant pour regarder, je vais vous une invitation pour que vous encore. Si vous conservez la vie, je vais vous présenter une autre nouvelle en créole. Après ça, je vais vous présenter au Chanel. Merci, Appel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Chanel Novel.